So I've been getting a lot of questions asking about the very first step of an illustration. How do you just get going? Well, in most cases, the first step of a drawing is always the line work. Now, some artists will do this straight on the computer, and that's a lot easier if you have a Cintiq. But most artists will be doing this on paper with traditional media, whether it's a pen drawing or pencil, whatever they're most comfortable with. So the next step is to get that image inside of Photoshop. And you do that by scanning it. And what you can see here on the left is when I scanned it at sort of the default settings. And it tried to do some auto contrast on its own. You can see it didn't do a very good job of it. The image on the right, I lowered the brightness and I increased the contrast. And the result I got was much more representative of the actual image. Now the next step is going to involve quite a bit of manipulating this. I'm going to really increase the contrast, but it's still good to start with a scan that's as close to the real image as you can get. This way you have more options. If I were to have just accepted that first image, the one on the left, I would have been a little more limited in what I could do. It's already pretty blown out. So work with your scanner until you get an image that's a little bit more like the one you see on the right side. It's usually a good idea to save a copy of this scan once you've made it. So what I'll do is I'll make a copy of this, make a new document, and paste it in there. And for now I'll minimize the raw scan data. So now working on my new document, the goal is to make the white of the paper pure white. And I'm going to manipulate the image a bit to make this happen. So a good first step is the levels command. And with this, you can set where the white and black points are. And you're generally in increasing the contrast with this step. Now I'm going to do hue saturation and lower the saturation all the way down so it's black and white. And then do levels one more time. Now there are a lot of different ways to do this. I'm sure you've got your own method of making something black and white and adjusting the contrast, but I like to use levels and hue saturation. So now a way to check to see if your white is pure white is you can open the color picker and click anywhere in the white spot. And down here if you see six F's, that means it's pure white. Now I find this next step to be where things get really interesting. So if you're working with traditional media, you could lay down color, paint or pencil or something like that, over top of lines. But what that does is it covers up the lines in the process. And even if you were to erase, you might also erase the lines with it accidentally. Well, Photoshop allows you to separate them using layers. So here if you take a look at my layer palette, I've got two layers. I've got the background, which is white, and then layer one, which I'll rename lines. Now I'll set this layer to the multiply blending mode. At this point, any layers that are underneath will have the line work put on top of them, but the white of the paper will be ignored. So let me show you what I mean. So I can paint what looks like underneath the line work. So even if I painted with opaque white, it would still be underneath the line work. And the reason that I wanted to make that original line art layer to have pure white for the white of the paper is so that I can still use the eyedropper tool when I'm painting. Because if the top layer were slightly darker, like that, like the original scan, then the eyedropper doesn't work the same anymore. So at this point, working underneath the line art layer, I'd begin to block in all of my values. And I'm not going to get in too far into the details of this. I'm going to save that for the upcoming video series entitled Grayscale Rendering. So look out for that. But for the time being, now you've seen how it is that I start an illustration. And there's really no difference between starting with a pencil sketch that's been scanned in or a line drawing done in Photoshop. Either way, you'll probably be setting your line art layer to multiply, which allows you to separate it from the rest of your underdrawing.